Hello, this is uh, Sean Patrick Kelly, and welcome to the first of my batch of uh, interviews from the Fantasia Film Festival, uh, not counting my interview from Talk To Me, which uh, posted about a week ago. So uh, first up, we have my um, interview with uh, uh, horror auteur Larry Fessenden uh, about his uh, latest film, uh, Blackout, which is uh, part of his quote-unquote monster trilogy that began with the vampire film Habit from 1997 and continued with the Frankenstein variant The Prey from 2019. So uh, we have a pretty um, lengthy conversation about not only Blackout, but also the Mumblecore movement and... um, also, uh, the film Barbie, which happened to be opening the weekend of the interview. Uh, quick uh, note for people watching the video version of this interview. I actually forgot to press record on the video for this interview. So uh, it's going to be an audio-only interview. But if you're watching the video, there will be like a slideshow of stills from the film and other such stuff. So I hope you enjoy this interview with Larry Fessenden. Uh, we'll start by talking about your um, uh, monster trivia trilogy and whether it was something that always you intended to do or if it's just something that came to pass that you would make movies based on classic monsters. No, I think it came to pass. I mean, I, you know, we're, we're focusing on these three movies, which is a great pleasure for me because I did grow up loving the Universal Monsters. But I also had a huge foray into movies about the Wendigo, which is a real favorite of mine, a very... Uh, intangible mythology which of course is origin in canada so here we are but um so i made the wendigo the last winter i was involved in a video game called until dawn that had wendigos and i made a tv show called uh, 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 skin and bone so uh i'm into all sorts of monsters <laughs> uh, so what are some of the werewolf films that influenced you for blackout well, you know, I never wanted to particularly tribute a given werewolf film, but uh, they're in my DNA. I mean, I loved Wolfman when I was little, and then, of course, when The Howling came out and uh, American Werewolf in London, those were thrilling. But there were little werewolves along the way. There's a movie called Mark of the Vampire with Bela Lugosi, and there's a little sidekick werewolf in that. I loved the teenage werewolf makeup. I don't really know that movie. You know, this is from 1954 or something it's uh, michael landon uh so but i always like the flat snout werewolf more than uh turning into a a real full dog so these are sort of the things but i like dog soldiers ginger snaps is awesome you know so yeah oh yeah right that so it it goes on and on it's actually kind of a pleasure to see a werewolf is kind of the point it's Mm -hmm. one of the harder first of all it was much harder than doing a frankenstein there's Mm -hmm. something about the makeup and the movement and the pacing because the guy is a person for most of a month and so you got to sort of deal with all that so i like to say that the nature of the monster influences the the way the film mm-hmm. comes together and the themes of the film and um well during the q a last night you also mentioned the um werewolf by night comic books yeah yeah i mean in the 90s i went to miramax which of course is in scandal now because of harvey weinstein but it was you know a, great indie company at the time and I uh, I begged them to make Werewolf by Night uh, it was a comic book that I grew up on in the 70s uh, I only loved two of the issues but I read for for years and um, I just loved the depiction of the monster uh, by Mike Plug. he's an artist who did many things in horror he also designed the creatures for the thing by John Carpenter believe it or not he did the sketches so uh, yeah, that was my deal. I, I just liked the flat-faced werewolf and oh. wanted to get back to that. Have you seen the adaptation they did last year of Werewolf by Night? Oh, my God. I keep saying I should do my homework because I haven't seen it. They did it as like a Disney Plus Halloween yeah, yeah. special. Oh, I remember. Yeah. I had it on the calendar, and then I don't know. I never got to it. But I am literally going to go home and watch it because uh, I feel I'm remiss. Okay, so um, one scene in the, in the film that I was quite impressed by was like, so, like, Charlie is, like, talking about 
becoming a werewolf and, and the flashback is like kind of like rotoscoped oil painting. So uh, how did you accomplish that? Uh, I called upon my friend uh, James Seward. Mm -hmm. He's an animator and he painted 300 individual uh, paintings and, mm -hmm. you know, and then we animated them uh, one frame at a time. So that was a real labor of love. Now I think with AI, you could probably push a button and I would get that in 10 minutes, but this is real tactile filmmaking. And that's mm -hmm. what I, I like to be involved in. Just like people talk about practical makeup, um, but this is practical animation as well. Yeah. So this was also mentioned during the Q and A. Um, you were also like a producer on the film Late Phases, mm -hmm. made about a decade ago now. So, yeah, yeah. so um, how would you compare that to Blackout? Uh, that's funny. I mean, I produced a lot of movies, and each one is very singular because of the director and, the, of course, the experience and getting the actors together and all the choices. So those werewolves were really fun. Um, they look like weird little feral shih tzus or some sort of uh but they're very beautiful and that was ambitious and there's a motion control transformation scene which i think took two days to film mm -hmm. and i remember we were fetishizing that uh it's a wonderful cast nick Dimici, who is an old uh, comrade mm -hmm. and um uh, and interesting ironically my makeup team that did my werewolf was only on that movie to do the age makeup so, uh, which was a whole thing in itself. And then we had Tom Noonan in that film, a lot of great character actors. So every werewolf movie is different, but that's also a slight slant rhyme to just a straightforward movie. It's more about an uh, old age community. So it has a strange aspect, but it has the same problem of there's some werewolf stuff in the beginning and then you have a whole month yeah. waiting for the werewolf stuff at the end. So it's just a difficult creature to put in a movie. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I noticed in Black OJ, I keep on emphasizing, it's it's three nights. It's three nights. Well, I got that from <laughs> Werewolf by Night. Yeah. And even in the comic where it doesn't matter as much the sense of time, mm -hmm. they obviously thought, well, this is ridiculous. And if you think about full moons, if, you know, you know that it's incremental. In other words, you might say that one night is the powerful night, but you'd have a little residue on the sides. Mm -hmm. So I like the three night thing. Yeah. And I think you mentioned Ginger Snaps. I don't think Ginger Snaps does the moon at all. I think it's just like... I don't know. No, no. And I think, it, I think it's just like she's turning into a werewolf. Oh. But, but I think that, as you said, moon has nothing to do with it in that film. It's true. But isn't the subliminal truth? That it, it, it's, about the, it's about... Uh, it's about... Cycle, like, woman's it, cycle. It's, 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 so it's, it's about like monthly, PMS. Yeah. yeah. It's a monthly thing. So actually <laughs> really brilliant. That's such a great movie. And the sequel is fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So they're dealing with the cycle of the moon face it or the cycle of whatever <laughs> cycle <laughs> <laughs> so um so venda uh, blackout has like the uh one scene cameo by uh, barbara crampton which kind of feels like a bit of a tease so did you hope that she'd be more involved with the film or was it always just meant to be that one scene and done <laughs> no and you know i mean i hope we're not promoting it as a new barbara crampton film uh, it's not the movie is uh <laughs> there's many, many wonderful cameos. It's just that Barbara's so beloved that <laughs> people are focusing on that. But I think she, she's she got her place. And I, the, the idea that I always imagined was it's sort of a movie, uh, a, a, a traveling movie, and that you get each character and they sort of, um, they stay in your mind. So I really, that was the task, is make an impact. You have basically one scene, probably three or four minutes. And I think she does make a wonderful impact because she's sort of, dressed down and very sexy and uh, it's a fun exchange the two of them have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, and I also like, I had like the oh, it's that guy moment when Joe Swanberg showed up because <laughs> I just like seeing him look, like, uh, oh, taking back to your next like a decade ago. Next. Yeah. So good in that. He's got yeah. the arrow stuck on him the whole time. Yeah. Uh, Joe's an amazing actor. Uh, you know, he's obviously uh, known for creating Mumblecore or being part of that uh, movement, but he's obviously uh, uh, gone on to uh, popular shows that he's created. I don't know what, Drinking Buddies or something. And uh, But he's just, just a very smart filmmaker. He loves the art form and he's done a lot with it and uh, he, he it was such a pleasure I feel it you know and he's got uh, one scene and it's a single take and we did that early on I think it was take mm -hmm. two 
and we did coverage because sometimes, well, first of all, he flew all the way to <laughs> New York to do it. So mm -hmm. I felt like, oh, well, we got to keep filming him. But we were both laughing that, mm -hmm. you know, on a, on a Swanberg set, that yeah. would be it. And in the end, that was it for the edit. It was so good. Well, just a matter of timing, six degrees of separation. Like, so, so this, this weekend, the Barbie movie comes out, directed by Greta Gerwig. They work together in the, like the whole mumblecore thing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Well, it's it's nice to see, and you know, Barbie's being presented as like an art film, even though we all know it's selling a product. But but in a weird way, it's fair that she comes from a certain community. It's like Amy <laughs> Simons. There's a lot of uh, actors from the mumblecore world. Um, and and now you know they've got different careers. Mm -hmm. Even Ty West would be associated with my early stuff, mm -hmm. um, and now he's got bigger budgets, and we'll see what he does with Maxine. But uh, mm -hmm. that's great. You know that's the whole point. You're supposed to come up from indie film and mm -hmm. then enter into the the wear your big boy pants, <laughs> and it's what you do with your big boy pants that really becomes important. So we'll see about Barbie and so on. But. Uh, Good, good luck to her. Okay, I think that's a good note to end on. Fair enough, I agree. I don't think I'll ever have big boy pants. That's the only problem. But it's 